In this video, we will learn how to describe the structure of muscles by first exploring the different types of muscle, before looking at skeletal muscles in more detail on both a macroscopic and microscopic scale. We will learn how skeletal muscle fibres are specialised for their function of providing movement to various parts of the human body. Each adult human body contains around 650 muscles, making up about half of your total body weight. Muscles are structures in the body that aid movement by contracting and relaxing. They help food move through our digestive system after a meal, allow our legs and arms to move when running a race, and make the pupils in our eyes become smaller when we look into a bright light. Without the ceaseless action of our muscles, even our heart would stop beating. There are three main different types of muscle which carry out these different functions. Skeletal muscle, which is sometimes called striated muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. While skeletal muscles are under our conscious control, and so are called voluntary muscles, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle are involuntary muscles, so they're controlled subconsciously and we cannot decide to simply stop them from working. Some examples of voluntary skeletal muscles can be found in our limbs, such as to allow our arms and legs to move. They are called skeletal muscles as they are attached to the bones of our skeleton by tendons. This image displays what some magnified skeletal muscle cells might look like. They are sometimes called striated muscles due to their stripy appearance. Let's keep a checklist of the key features that we've covered so far. Some skeletal muscles are described as antagonistic as they work in a pair where when one muscle contracts, the other relaxes, allowing a coordinated movement such as in the arm. For example, the bicep and tricep are antagonistic muscles in the upper arm. Here you can see a contracted bicep and a relaxed tricep when the arm is bent. However, when the arm is stretched out, the bicep relaxes and the tricep contracts. This allows the arm to move. In addition to helping our body with movement, skeletal muscles also help us to maintain our posture. If we were to look at the individual cells in smooth muscle, we would see that they are non-striated, or not stripy. Smooth muscle is sometimes more generally known as involuntary muscle, as it is not under conscious control as skeletal muscle is. Smooth muscle is found in many different organs. For example, there are smooth muscle in the walls of hollow organs, like the esophagus pictured here, also in the stomach and in the intestines to help food move through the digestive system. There's also smooth muscle in artery walls. In both the arteries and the digestive system, the function of smooth muscle is to apply pressure to these organs to help push substances through them, like blood or food, continuously without us having to think about it. Cardiac muscle, some of the cells of which you can see in this image, are also involuntary, but are only found in the heart. And like skeletal muscle cells, you can see that cardiac muscle cells also appear stripy or striated. The cells of cardiac muscle are described as myogenic, which means that the impulse originates from the heart and not externally, like with voluntary muscles. This allows our heart to beat continuously and tirelessly in a regular rhythm to pump blood around our body. Let's take a closer look at the macroscopic structure of skeletal muscle and how all of its different components function. The word macroscopic refers to structures which are visible to the naked eye without the need to use a microscope. Each muscle is considered an individual organ, and each of these muscles contains different tissues, such as the skeletal muscle tissue itself, nervous tissue mostly consisting of motor neurons, blood tissues, connective tissues like tendons, which attach the muscle to bones. But let's get rid of some of these other tissues for now and focus on the muscle tissue itself. Skeletal muscle consists of many bundles of muscle fibres, which are sometimes called fascicles. These muscle fibres contain a collection of tissues, cells and organelles. Depending on its size, one muscle may be made up of up to thousands of individual muscle fibres. Each bundle of fibres is surrounded by a protective layer of connective tissue called the perimysium. The prefix peri, like perimeter, means that it's surrounding something while the my in the middle of the word refers to muscle. The perimysium helps the cells to withstand the pressure of muscle contraction. This connective tissue layer also provides a place for the blood and nervous tissue to connect to the individual muscle fibres. Blood brings oxygen, glucose and other nutrients to the muscle cells to allow them to respire, release energy, grow and repair themselves. Although they might not actually be visible without a microscope, motor neurons are nerve cells that carry out the important function of stimulating muscle contraction. Each skeletal muscle fibre is one very long cylindrical muscle cell, which is enclosed within a plasma membrane called the sarcolemma. The prefix sarco comes from the Greek word for flesh, which is often used to describe the components of muscles. 
The suffix lemma comes from the Greek word for sheath, as it forms a protective membrane around each fibre. The sarcolemma is sometimes called the myolemma, which contains the prefix myo, and you may recall this refers to the muscles. Let's look at the structure of a muscle fibre on a microscopic scale. Muscle fibres have several adaptations that make them effective for their function. We can already see the sarcolemma, which we explored earlier, that forms a surrounding membrane all around the muscle fibre. But don't be concerned about the complex looking structures elsewhere, as we'll go through them all one by one. Muscle fibres, a part of one of which you can see here, are much longer than other cells. This is because they formed by many individual muscle cells fusing together when you were only an embryo. This makes the muscles strong, as any junctions between cells add a point of weakness, so having long cells reduces the number of weak points. This is also why a suit of armour is strongest and most effective when it's formed from one continuous sheet of metal, as every junction adds a weak point. As they're formed from many cells, one muscle fibre typically has many nuclei. The cytoplasm within a muscle fibre is called the sarcoplasm, in most animal cells, the main role of the endoplasmic reticulum is a site of protein synthesis, modification and transport. Muscle fibres contain a specialised endoplasmic reticulum, called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which extends throughout the muscle fibre. The sarcoplasmic reticulum of a skeletal muscle fibre contains calcium ions, which are needed to initiate muscle contraction. Muscle cells require a large amount of energy when they contract, so they also contain many mitochondria which you may recall are the site of cellular respiration to release the energy that's needed for muscular contraction. Parts of the sarcolemma surrounding the muscle fibre fold inwards, which form structures called transverse, or T, tubules. This means that an impulse arriving from a motor neuron can spread along the whole muscle fibre's sarcoplasm so that all the cells in the muscle can contract simultaneously. Each muscle fibre contains long cylindrical organelles called myofibrils, which have been labelled here in pink. Myofibrils are made up of protein fibres. There can be between 1,000 and 2,000 myofibrils in just one muscle fibre, which are arranged in parallel to each other and to the muscle fibre along its interior. Myofibrils are specialised for contraction. You can think of the structure of muscles like a rope. Ropes are made of individual strings, much like muscles are made of muscle fibre bundles. And each of those strings is made up of multiple threads, much like muscle fibre bundles are each made up of multiple muscle fibres. The individual strands that make up each thread can be thought of as the myofibrils, which together provide the muscle with their combined strength. Myofibrils are made up of many repeating functional units called sarcomeres, which we can see as we've removed the sarcoplasmic reticulum from this one region of the myofibril. Let's take a closer look at one sarcomere so we can see how its different parts help the muscle to contract. The length of a single sarcomere is marked as the distance between two Z lines, and this distance shortens, as does the sarcomere as a whole, when the muscle contracts. Myofibrils have repeating patterns of these sarcomeres, which are made up of two protein myofilaments, one of which is called actin, shown here in red, and the other is myosin, which is shown here in blue. Actin is the thinner filament, which is made up of two strands of protein twisted together. Myosin is thicker than actin and therefore appears darker in colour. It's a long, rod-shaped fibre with globular heads that project outwards. Myofibrils have alternating bands which appear lighter and darker due to the composition of actin and myosin within them in each sarcomere. This makes them look stripy, or striated. Let's simplify this diagram a bit so we can see the different regions of the sarcomere more clearly. The eye band is also known as the isotropic band. This word means optically clear and regular, because it's made of straight, thin filaments of actin only, which are represented here in red. If you forget which filament is which, just check back in this key. As they only contain thin actin filaments, the eye bands appear considerably lighter than the rest of the sarcomere, and for this reason they're sometimes called the light bands. Within the eye band is a line that marks the end of the sarcomere, which is called the Z-line, so named for the German word zwischen, which means between. The Z-line always appears slightly darker in micrograph images, as though it has been represented here as a straight line, it actually consists of a high concentration of zigzagging actin filaments and other proteins. Remember that each two adjacent Z-lines, which you might remember as Z for zigzagging, mark the end of the sarcomere. The A-band is also known as the anisotropic band, which means that it's optically opaque, because it contains both types of filaments and the bulky globular heads of myosin. 
As the A-bands contain these thickered myosin filaments, they appear considerably darker in micrograph images than the other bands, which is why they're sometimes called the dark bands. The outer edges of the A-band are darkest, as these are the regions where actin and myosin overlap. The inner edges of the A-band, called the H-zone, are not quite so dark, as they only contain myosin filaments. The middle of the H-zone is called the M-band, and you can remember this as M for middle. There's also a way to remember the H-band versus the I-band. The letter H is wider than the letter I, so the H-band is the one made of the thick myosin filaments, while the I-band is made of the thin actin filaments only. Now that we know a bit more about the structure of the sarcomere, let's see what happens when it contracts. In the contracted sarcomere, you can see that the distance between the two Z-lines has decreased, so the length of the sarcomere has also decreased. This is because the actin filaments have been pulled by the myosin filaments closer towards the M-line in the middle of the sarcomere. And this also means that the length of the H-zone, which only contains myosin, has decreased. The decreasing length of the H-zone, which only contains myosin filaments, is what causes the whole sarcomere to shorten. Let's see how much we've learned about the structure of muscles by having a go at a couple of practice questions. There are three major types of muscle tissue in the human body, skeletal, cardiac and smooth. Which type of muscle is primarily involved in conscious movements of the body? The question asks us to identify which type of muscle is involved in conscious movements. While some muscles are under conscious control and so are called voluntary muscles, other muscles are controlled subconsciously, so are involuntary. We cannot simply decide to stop involuntary muscles from working. Smooth muscle is a type of involuntary muscle involved in lots of different organ systems. For example, smooth muscles are found in the walls of hollow organs like our stomach and intestines to help move food through the digestive system. Smooth muscle is also found in the walls of arteries and contracts to help push blood through these blood vessels continuously. Cardiac muscle cells are only found in the heart and like smooth muscle, these muscles are also involuntary. They need to be controlled subconsciously to ensure that the heart continuously beats in a consistent rhythm to pump blood around the body. Voluntary muscles are skeletal muscles, such as those in our limbs, which are our arms and legs, and they are those which are attached to bones and can be controlled voluntarily to allow coordinated movement of certain parts of the body. In addition to helping us to move, skeletal muscles also help us to maintain our body's posture. As they are the only type of voluntary muscles, the type of muscle primarily involved in conscious movements of the body is skeletal muscle. Let's have a go at another practice question together. The diagram provided shows the basic structure of a sarcomere, which letter indicates the I band. As we can see in this image of a sarcomere, it is made up of two main filaments, actin myofilaments, which are shown in red, and myosin myofilaments, which are shown in blue. Actin is a thinner filament, made up of two strands of protein fibres twisted together. Myosin is a thicker filament, and is a long rod-shaped fibre with globular heads that project outwards. The different letters in this diagram show us the different regions of the sarcomere, so let's go through each one by one to find out which is labelling the I-band. The region labelled V, right in the middle of the sarcomere, is called the M-line. The M-line is found within a region called the H-zone, which has been labelled here with the letter X. The H-zone contains myosin filaments only. When the sarcomere contracts, the actin filaments will be pulled closer towards the M-line and the H-zone will shorten. The region labelled with a Z is called the A-band. The A-band encompasses the H-zone, but it also contains regions around its outer edges where actin and myosin overlap, which makes these regions appear slightly darker. The length of a single sarcomere is measured as the distance between two Z-lines, which on this diagram were indicated by the letter W. As the only letter remaining is Y, we can tell that this is labelling the I-band. The I-band is a region on the sarcomere that only contains actin filaments, which makes it appear lighter in colour, and is the reason why it's sometimes called the light band. Comparatively to the other regions of the sarcomere, which will all contain some myosin filaments and will therefore appear darker. Therefore, the letter indicating the I-band is Y. Let's review the key points that we've covered in this video. Muscles are structures in the body that aid movement by contracting and relaxing. Muscles can be voluntary skeletal muscles or involuntary smooth or cardiac muscles. A single muscle consists of many muscle fibre bundles, which are surrounded by a protective layer called the paramyseum. 
Muscle fibers within these bundles are specialized and elongated cells, with many mitochondria, a sarcoplasmic reticulum to store calcium ions, and myofibril organelles, which are specialized for muscular contraction. Myofibrils contain repeating units called sarcomeres, which in turn contain actin and myosin protein filaments.